Welcome to Weekend Project. This time we're working on some of my half square triangles out of the bucket. I thought about making a neat little either pin cushion or you can make it a, obviously a gift for somebody or maybe a gift for yourself. You just never know. You never know until you try it, right? So this is a three stacked pin cushion and I just thought, well, why not? I have these half square, half square triangles. How can I use them up? So I made this one here with some of the half square triangles. Just, I made a little, so the goose goes this way and then the goose goes that way. That was nine of them. And then four made a little four patch, little pinwheel here sort of thing. And then I have 16 that's gonna make a bigger one. So this is kind of what it ends up looking like in the end. Okay, now if you don't like all the uh, half square triangles and all the sewing um, on, the, on the top side, you could just use just plain old fabric, it doesn't matter. So the top one ends up being about three by three ish before you start sewing it. And then the bottom one here is about four by four and a half by four and a half before you, before you sew it around. And the bottom one here is about five and a half by five and a half. That's just giving you a rough estimate of what you size wise of square fabric. So if you just have, you know, a charm pack, use two to make the bottom and then trim two up to make the middle and trim two up more to make the top. And there you go. So, and you need a nice long needle, like one of these, okay. And I just went from the bottom all the way through, found the centers in each one and came up here and then back down through and then back up and then back down through. Now what you could do is use a button very easily. It's the same way as you would secure it to the bottom and then secure, secure another button to the top and you can just use those as you go between points to tighten everything up. That's completely up to you, whatever you want to do. All right, there, isn't that pretty? A little stacked, it's adorable. Okay, so now we're gonna make another one. So I made the middle one because I'm making these opposite. This is, you know, uh, purple, green, and pink and purple. So what I have here is green, pink, and purple, and then more green. So we'll just kind of do the flip and the flop, okay? And that one I just had as a plane. This one here's the plane, this one here's the plane. This one actually here, I did a green um, little square on the other side, but I, I realized it didn't really need it, so. All right, so now that I made my little pinwheel for the top, of course you can do whatever you like with your four little uh, half square triangles, you can make the square, you can do the two gooses or whatever it is you like to do. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just kinda gonna do a little um, stabilizing stitch, I guess, to uh, secure it all the way around. Okay, on, on, a, on a bit of batting. You don't have to use the batting, but I have lots of extra bits from the long arm and free motion quilting and stuff like that. So I like to be able to use them up. I don't really wanna toss them out, okay? So I'm just gonna go from one side to the next. Make the X. Okay. And of course, we're trying to get ahead of the game and make Christmas gifts for peoples. And if you have someone who likes to either embroider or um, cross stitch or even, 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 I don't know, even somebody who just likes to hand darn or likes to hand stitch. You can, different layers of the pin cushion could stand for different types of pins. Okay. Oh, put it down. Just going all the way around. So, cool. so I'm going to trim this up, and then it's going to. I'm going to cut another piece just like that, this this same size. Okay. Did I get that side already? I did. Okay. All right. So now we have that. That was just there to remind me that was the matching piece for the bottom, okay? So now we're just gonna square this up, get the same size. Here, and this looks like it is three and a quarter by three and a quarter, all right? So let's trim this up to three and a quarter by three and a quarter, it's not much. I just grabbed a, a four inch square three and a quarter. All right, let's get the right quarter here. Here, and then three and a quarter there. Actually, we can do it on the side here. 
Okay, now that should be pretty darn close to the size of that. It is. Okay, so now what I like to do is put that on here. You don't have to use batting for the back either or the bottom, but you know, like I said, I have lots, so I don't mind using it up and finding ways to use them, use it up. Okay, we'll trim that up on the top there. Okay, and now we're going to take those two and put the two right sides together. And so not quite all the way around. We're going to leave a little space where we have a little spot where we turn everything right side out. And then we just do a little whip stitch to uh, close that up. Okay, so make sure you're leaving enough space in here to be able to uh, turn it right side out. But make sure you got enough to on this side to form those corners too. Okay, I know it's tricky. It's harder with the smaller one. That's why I thought I'd show you that one. And then lift up when you get to the corners. Don't forget to pivot. All the way. Good way to use scraps. You're not quite sure what to do with. I said to the, looking at the bucket, and I'm like, I gotta do stuff with you. That's it, we're coming up with a project. Coming up with a project for this weekend. What can we use? All right, and then just a little bit. So I came all the way to here and to here. Those are the two spots. And then I just have this little tiny little hole right there to be able to flip everything out. Okay, so now you take your big scissors and you snip off those corners, obviously not coming to your stitches. Okay, and then you take this and you put take one of those right corners and poke it through the center and then just gently with your finger, poke it out. And then you've got one of these little shaping tools around here somewhere, there we go, one of these, okay. It's a boning tool, shaping tool, poking tool. What do you wanna call it? It's one of them's, or a chopstick will do. Or, you know, if you have a pair of dull, uh, dull tip scissors, not sharp tips or anything like that, that would work as well. Okay, and then just poke them out. Poke it out, poke it out. Poke it out. There we go. That uh, makes it very cute and adorable. Tiny little pin cushion. If you want to travel, that would be a nice little travel one too. Take that with you, put your little pins in it, maybe if it's in a little case or something. And then we're just gonna stuff it. We're just gonna stuff it with a little bit of this. Not too, too much, because you wanna, you wanna have some be able to, um, play on it too, but you want to be able to make sure that the, if you want to put any pins in there, they're going to stay. Just kind of work it in with your finger to each corner. Take little bits. It's better to take little bits than it is to take big chunks of the batting, um, the stuffing, okay? Because you can always, always add a little bit more where it needs to, sometimes in the center or up here where it comes to the corners, just tuck it in, okay? And then I was just using one of these little clips to hold it with the, the seam, seam allowance tucked in, so when I come and do a little whip stitch, it's, uh, it's nice, nice and ready to pin, or ready to sew, okay? So isn't that cute? Yeah, so that's one, and that'll sit. You know, you can stack them straight, or stack them like a twist like I did on this one, whatever, even if you just want to do a two. You don't have to do a three, I mean, it's up to you. You know, only limitation is your imagination, or you can just do even one this size. So they're fun stuff. Just bust your scraps and you'll be surprised what you can come up with. Okay, so let's tidy up this little messy mess here a moment. And let's do the big one, okay? Now this one, I was using different patterns to go with the half square triangles. Like um, this one was the uh, pinwheel, obviously, and this one was the geese. And then I had this one a bit, of, it's the ones on the angle. You can see where it's the green and the white stripes. And then the bottom one under here has got um, the little, um, squares and then this one I'm kind of doing like a zigzag okay so I'm taking the I'm working my way down the line and if you do it this way it keeps everything in order and it's easier to uh, sew the pieces together so here's my two my two creams I guess my two cream triangles together and then we're going to sew down and then we're going to take our two green triangles and put those two together and sew down. Looks like this one just needs a little bit of trimming. Oh, oops. If you need to put a pin in, you know, don't, don't be afraid to. 
Okay, and then this one, put the cream triangles together. And these are about one and a half to one and three quarter inch uh, half square triangles, okay? And they've been left over from projects. You know, when you do the stitch and flip, it's the extra bit that's been flipped, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All right, and see how this little train? Now, if we take the top, because we know that's the first where it's supposed to be, and we take our second, we know that's the way it's supposed to line up. See, because it's making that zigzag. Then we just take those two, put them together, and sew it down. Okay, so we don't have to even break threads or cut threads or anything at all, okay? And then we're gonna cut, and then I'll show you. Once we open it up again, we know that this one here is gonna form the green part that comes down here is the green part of the zigzag, okay? And we just flip that up, match up the little seam, and sew down. Okay. Sometimes fiddly working with tiny pieces. <laughs> and then there's the last one right there. We just have to line it up and sew it down. That way none of the pieces get lost, especially when they're tiny. And I'm sure you guys have much tinier stuff than I have, but this is about as small as I think I've, I've made things. <laughs> That's tiny. <laughs> I'm sure I will grab the patience for tiny, tiny stuff. And there we go. Okay, so we'll give that a quick little press and then we'll trim up the side bits just like that and then we'll put it together. And they'll be our little green and cream or tan zigzag, okay? And I've already got the back here for the green, the big one. And I'm clearly wearing the colors for it today. <laughs> I didn't realize that till right now. All right, so we're just going to make this a little bit prettier like this one so we have some nice uh, straight seams to uh, sew down to between the two lines. Okay. All right. We're just going to line that up, and then we're just going to pin. I want to keep those nice together. Okay, and we'll just put two little pins here and here. And then we'll take this square as a measurement to cut the right piece of this fabric for the back or the underside of the pillow, the paint cushion pillow, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it a scrappy spring pillow, pin cushion pillow. That's a lot of words <laughs> for such a little project. <laughs> for spring. And don't forget to, to uh, join us tomorrow for our live stream. Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern. Happy to see you there. You don't even have to chat if you don't want to. Just uh, knowing you're out there is nice. That's nice for me. All right, so this one, like I said, is probably about five and a half, six and a half, whatever you want to, whatever, whatever you want to do with it. Seems to be six by six. Okay, so we'll go six by six on this one. Cut a little piece off. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. Okay. Here. Like I said, you don't have to batting them, stitch it down like I am. You could just put the two fabrics together, make a little pocket to turn it right side out, and and you still got your you still got your pin cushion. I mean, you just stuff it with this stuff, right? It's no big deal. I kind of was like I said, was using up my stuff. I'll do the top one here and just do some, you know, just kind of follow it a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely stitched down, just enough to give it a little bit of depth, okay? with the quilting. So I guess it's a quilted pin cushion? Oh. We'll just do a couple of zigzags here. We'll follow the cream cream triangles. Okay. And of course I could use my knee lift, but not everybody has a knee lift. So I'll just lift my little handle at the back. This has a nice big handle. Uh, Nomi just has a little one, so it's kind of, this one, you know you're actually, it's, it's there, you know where it is. You can feel for it right away. Got used to it pretty fast. 
Okay, whoops. We'll just do these two. Perfect. One more, and then we'll cut and put them all together. Cut, so we'll put them all together. And they whip up pretty fast, especially if you're just using uh, just um, straight solid cuts of pieces. But I mean, if you've got scraps or you got, you know, what string block, string block little, um, you know, pink cushion would be lovely too. Lots of color, lots of color to pop up on it. So, and then again, just a kind of little straight stitch around the outside, kind of stabilizing. Some's going to get trimmed up, but that's okay. I just want to make sure everything's all together, just when I'm sewing all around. I'm going to put the two pieces together. Cut, and we'll trim this one up. Okay, here and here. And then make sure this is nice and smooth on this side. And here. And we can put it with this one, and then just sew all the way around. Like I said, you don't have to put the, the batting in if you don't want to. Skip it on this one. And then just leaving enough space to be able to turn it right side out. Don't forget to do a little back stitch as well. That's what helps secure that little section when you when you go to um, turn it right side out. It helps secure it. And it's kind of cute when you know you're sharing your scrappy project with some of your friends, and they might recognize some of the fabrics in your little project and, I don't know, something bright for their little craft room. You they just had a, a lovely set of pins they didn't want to use. You can make something like that and put them all on <laughs> so they can show them off. All right, so cut off the little corners. It just helps um, make these corners pop out a little bit better if you don't have all that extra bulk in the inside. Okay, and then just taking one corner and poking it through. And this is where you check as well to make sure you've stitched all the way around and nothing's too close or it's going to fray or stitches are going to pop off. And you can poke it out. Of course, it's easier to get a nice sharper point when you're not dealing with batting on, on a couple of layers, right? So if you really want, really want those sharp, sharp points, then I don't put the batting underneath the, the panel or the little chunk of fabric, okay? Not pretty. So cute. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so now from here, we stuff it. To skid a tucky, we're gonna stuff it. All right, so come over here, I got lots. Just kind of fluff it up, fluff it up a little bit. Sometimes the fluffy needs fluffing, it does. All right, and then go down to the farthest corner first and then work your way to the other corner, making sure there's sufficient batting in those little bits, okay? Because what if somebody wants to put a pin in there? What if somebody wants to use the whole thing up? Cute little cat pillow. <laughs> A little, little Clyde pillow. <laughs> I'm sure he would love that. Okay, just kind of want to make sure it's evenly stuffed. You can always just kind of feel it and, you know, it needs a little bit more right at the top here because I know I'm going to have to whip stitch that so I don't want it to be, you know, too flat. I want to have some dimension on this side of the little pin pillow as well. Okay. And you're making like a little mini quilt, but it's a pillow. A little pin cushion pillow. All right, so we'll take another one of these clamps or clips. Okay. There we go. Now we'll move the rest of the bits over here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. And then to just close it up. There's many different ways for you to close it up. It's completely up to you. I just get a little, a little hand stitching needle, tie a little knot at the end, make sure I tuck the knot onto the inside 
of the fabric where it's folded over with the, for the seam allowance. Kind of squish this closed. Sometimes you may have to put in a pin if the gap is a little bit bigger than uh, you would anticipate it. And then just take a little bit and just go back and forth. And like a little, I guess almost like a little straight stitch really. But I find it's the, the one that just gets it done. And it looks okay. Okay. And of course, you could use matching thread. You could use green instead of the white I'm using. <laughs> or if you wanted to, you can probably still st maybe stick it under the machine and stitch it closed, but then you'd have one side um, machine closed and the rest. But that, I mean, that's up to you. You do what you want to do. Just make something pretty for yourself or for a friend. Maybe even make a few for, uh, you know, uh, the Gildy's Christmas, you know, Secret Santa thingy or something. we got to be prepared for Christmas. We know it sneaks up on us. All right, and then just do a little loop to tie it in a knot. And then I always come back right through into the fabric, all the way through to like another side here, and then do a little clip. And then that just loses the tail of that thread inside the project, okay? All right, so we have to do the top part real quick here for the little green. Okay, this shouldn't take too long. Again, like I said, keeping the knot to the inside. Oh, I made it a bigger knot, not such a small knot, went right through. Mm -hmm. Okay, there. Oh, such a beautiful day out today. We know spring is coming. Well, it says it's here, but <laughs> according to the calendar, but the weather is definitely changing. It is getting much nicer. The mud season is here <laughs> with the big melt. All right, let's just finish it up to the other side. Oops, I don't want to lose my tail here. Oh, 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 come the other way. One more. And then we're just going to close it up, putting those two together, do a little locking stitch, come through the project, and lose the tail on the inside. Okay, so that one's there, and we're going to put that pin right in there so I know where it is. And now here's the big one. Okay, so if you want to keep your uh, button secure on the bottom, okay, as you're going up and down, I'm going to give you a little tip here. You come through it like this, and because you have a double string, you come through the other part near the, put the needle through the two strings at the very bottom, okay, and lock it into place. And then that helps when you go to feed it from the bottom up to keep that button in place and so you have a place to come back down into. So there you go. Tip of the day. <laughs> now I'm gonna find the middle, and I'm gonna put this pin right through. I'm going to try and come up in the middle of this project as well, which is right there. Can you see that? That's kind of right in the middle of this project. And I'm going to bring this button up, holding it taut, not too taut, okay, not too taut because you don't want to, you don't want to yank it. And then find the middle project spot of the second one. You could do this in squares, you could do this in big triangles, you could do this in circles, whatever, okay? So, and here's your chance. If you want to stack it straight, stack it mixed, stack it just a little bit higgledy-piggledy so it's like turning around, I mean, this is, the, the option is yours, okay? So again, finding the, the center, and then we're gonna, again, center of this one here, coming, oops, all the way up. We want to get really close to we can. This, this one has a kind of a busy center because that's where all the points are meeting with the pinwheel. But if we just give it a little bit of pressure and be patient trying to get through that little bit of thick fabric, we will get there, okay? So I kind of like them, well, you know what? They're not all for me. <laughs> have to remember that. They're not all for me. So maybe I'll do this one just a little askew. Just a tiny little bit. Tiny little bit. Okay. And then you take your second button and you load it up. Mine's, sm uh, mine's smaller than the first one. I put the big one on the bottom. And then you loop it through. Loop it through again to the second eye of the button. 
okay? And then you want to come straight down like you just did, but you just went up instead of down, okay? So poking this through, like again, the, probably the first one's going to be a little bit difficult because of the seams where the seams are matching up for the um, pinwheel, okay? So again, tugging it down just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then finding the center of this, the, the, the third one or second one or whatever. You could do stack it and it'll look like a Christmas tree. You can make like a Christmas tree. All right, and then trying to find the center of the green and then trying to find the second eye of the button here. There we go, perfect. Okay, now give this all a little, to, not too much of a tug, just, just, just enough to get it all together, okay? And then we could do that one more time, going all the way up. And this is a double thread, of course. You gotta poke your way through. Come on, you. Okay. And out. Well, there it is. I felt ya. Just line it up with the eye of the knee, or the eye of the button there, the buttonhole. Come on. We almost had ya. Okay. Seriously? Oh, there we go. Ha! <laughs> Not like fighting with it. All right, there we go. Isn't that pretty? I saw little fluffies. And then down again. And then just lock stitch it on the other side. Okay. There we go. Well, we get through. And that is going to be the weekend project. Isn't that cute? And you can make all sorts of colors. Could you imagine a nice little rainbow one? So what if you put, you know, my, my long arm pins go on the bottom one and my hand stitch pins go on the top and my normally sewing, sewing pins can go on the, the, the third or second one there. So the options are yours. Don't be limited, all right? So hopefully you make some. I'd love to see them. Post them in the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop Mafia group if you would like to join. It's like our online guild for the Mafia, or for the, for the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop, called the Mafia Group, but we're not really that bad. And uh, just answer three very simple questions, and you're more than welcome to join us and post your pictures of your fur critters and what you got going on for dinner. We love it all. All right? Take care. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and checking us out on Patreon, and uh, we will see you. All right? Take care. Have fun. Hope you make some. Bye-bye.